so today's topic is the um, examples of uh, KNX Virtual. Uh, there will be a series of, of these webinars, and this is the first one. It's better for you to, or easier to, uh, to start actually with KNX Virtual or with, with KNX in general even. I'll um, want to start from the uh, website. Uh, so if you want to find out more information about KNX Virtual, uh, or even about KNX in general, just visit um, support.knx.org. And then you can land in these pages for KNX Virtual via the section training. And here it is, KNX Virtual. What I basically want to do today is just to go through the examples, uh, uh, well, the base view example, actually. So here it is. So I described here, uh, we described here what kind of functions are included in this example. And the ETS project file is also here available. So uh, we've called it a KV23 base, uh, so KNX Virtual 2.3. Uh, and um, this is the base example or the base view example, better said. So I already have um, downloaded that. I have already imported that into um, ETS. You can see it here. So here is this project. And um, well, that's it actually. You just need to import it and then you can open it. And then you'll see um, example given, uh, you could go to the devices view. You see devices there. You can, uh, what I prefer to do is to go to topology. And um, there you can see the, the six devices that, that are required for this example. So the next step is just to start, well, KNX Virtual is of course already started. You just need to, via settings, actually confirm the interface that, uh, that you're going to need in order to make a connection with uh, ETS. So, um, and that's also very easy. You basically, you just need to um, accept the default settings here. So by clicking OK, and then you can go into the devices view. You will need that view. Well, actually, I have already done that, but I can uh, do it once more. So suppose that I need to uh, commission the device D4 for the first time. So how do you do that? Actually, very easy. You just select it from uh, here, topology view, right click, download, a full download. Uh, it's, you need a full download again, because uh, if it's for the first time, you also need to set the individual address. So let's try that. Um, so in the user interface of ETS, it's indicated which device, uh, for which device you need to press uh, the programming button. So that's D4 and here it is D4. So if I just press this programming button, then the individual address will be programmed. And then after a while, uh, the application program as well will also be downloaded. As you can see, um, yeah, this is it. This is the all, all you have to do. Um, I'm not going to do this for all these devices, uh, So, uh, but I have already done that, of course. So let's have a look at the base view then. So let's open it. So here it is. And let's have a look at the description of um, on the uh, web page. Um, so here it is. So a first function that is included is D41. So by D41, we mean the first channel of D4. So those two buttons here, so the top buttons, they switch D71, D72, and D73. So here we have D7. So this is D7, 1, 2, and 3. So and let's try that. And indeed, that's what we see. So we can indeed toggle, uh, switch on and off, better said, the three channels of um, device D7. Um, extra, so it says uh, there's something extra. Um, so inside the exercise, there's also an OR relation set for the feedback. An OR relation means that at least one of the outputs needs to be switched on in order to have um, a positive feedback. So let's try that. So if I just simulate a broken lamp by clicking the lamp, then I have 
two out of three still working, which means positive feedback because it's an or relation. One out of three still positive. All three broken, of course, is not positive anymore. And that's what we see here in the result. It's black, black uh, background. If I repair one of the lamps again, uh, we see again uh, a red background color here. So that's the first function. Uh, the second function is uh, so also described here, of course. So it's the second row actually that switches now four, five, and six of these seven. But this time the feedback is put in an um, end relation. So that means that all three need to be switched on in order to have positive feedback. So let's try that. If I just make one lamp broken, then we see indeed that the feedback is um, yeah, not positive anymore. So that's what you can try for yourself. Uh, next function is, um, so the, the next row of buttons that can control D2, one. So that's the first channel of D2, so these blinds here. So let's try that. So if I operate the blinds, so the third row, stop the blind and here a second row. Uh, the, the next row, so that's um, D4 indeed, it will control D2, channel two. And that's what we see here, right? Okay, I'll just stop here, this position. Um, so what is extra also here in this exercise is that the next button, so the next buttons here, these ones, they also actually uh, represent, or these buttons represent an, um, a so-called um, scenario where the, the copy, where the, um, the positions of channel one and channel two of the blinds are copied into respectively channel three and four. So this is also uh, prepared for you so that you can Check for yourself how how the, how, it is, how it's done in ETS. Um, so what you need to do first is to make the scenario actually learn. So it has to learn the positions. So that's what you do by clicking the dot uh, L button here. Just one click is enough. And if you then click the other button, the dot A, which stands for activate, then you activate the scenario. So so with the learn button you have just learned the positions from channel one and channel two and with activate you will then actually um, yeah make it happen so to say so let's try that and indeed so we see channel three and channel four moving channel three will stop at the position of channel one channel four will also uh, respectively then uh, stop at the position of channel two, and um, yeah, that's how a, that's uh, how a scenario um, works. Um, then another uh, exercise, another function is this row here. Um, so what is particular about that? That is um, where the I, the R, and the U flag are actually um, used. That is the scenario where um, a device reset for clicks for the D4 actually uh, would be done. So what is so particular about it? If I would not use all these flags, then a reset of this device would mean that the feedback is not updated. Yeah? So that means, although the lamp is switched on, I would have here a black background. Uh, instead of red, so that doesn't, uh, it's not, uh, yeah, it doesn't update, so to say. So therefore, we have the constellation of these flags in order to to overcome that problem. Um, by the way, you can see that also in the monitor of ETS, if you like to do that. Um, so I can maybe shortly demonstrate that by just starting the monitor, and if I just via the user interface of ETS do a um, reset device. 
then we can see that result here in the monitor. So there's a restart. And indeed, uh, there is a group value read sent out after restart, to which comes a response. So if you want to check that closely for yourself, just open D4 and open uh, D7, I would say. So the channel number six I have set and channel number eight. And so here you can also see that clearly. So the U, fly, the U and the I flag better set and here the R flag. So that's, that's the specific constellation that you need in order to have this uh, working properly. Um, if you do it, if you if you'll have a look at the buttons while I'm uh, doing this reset, you will see that uh, it shortly indeed goes to black and comes back to red again. So I'll try to demonstrate that. So have a look at the uh, screen here. So zero. So the background is red for the time being. If I do a reset, it will shortly become black. Just try to follow this. It's very short, but it's definitely there. Okay, so that's something that you could try um, for yourself, of course. Then um, last two functions that are described here is um, where seven and eight actually control um, dimmable lamps. So let's try that by simply switching them on. I can dim down, I can switch off again. The other lamp as well. Um, but the difference here is that for channel two, I have, uh, there's, uh, there has been set up um, a quicker uh, dimming. So a shorter dimming step actually or dimming step time, that's what you can see here. So this is much quicker as you can see. So that is basically it, what you can see um, in this example.